Hello and welcome to the Money Marketing Podcast. I'm Kimberly Dondo, Digital Content Manager. And in this week's Weekend Essay Podcast, we have Chief Reporter Lois Vallely giving her account of her first year at Money Marketing. Take it away, Lois. I distinctly remember my first day at Money Marketing. It was the 1st of June last year and I had been a freelance journalist for the preceding year. I'd enjoyed freelancing, especially during the strange period of time that was the COVID pandemic, but I had very much missed being part of a team. The first story I wrote for Money Marketing was about global investment management firm Brown Advisory bolstering its UK team with two new senior hires. I studied the press release very carefully, reading it about five times. This was because I had had no experience writing about financial services and wanted to make sure I definitely had all the details right. At the point I joined Money Marketing, the country was still in the clutches of the third lockdown, so I wasn't able to meet my teammates in the flesh straight away. But we had daily catch-ups on video call, as well as a few Friday afternoon socials, which helped me get to know the lovely and largely new editorial team a bit. But it has been great to be able to get back to the office and to events in recent months, and to meet people in person. One thing I have especially enjoyed writing about has been consolidation in the advisor market. Barely a day goes by when we don't write about a new deal or tie-up between IFAs. In fact, it has started to become a challenge to think of different ways of saying so-and-so by so-and-so. As I wrote in my November 2021 cover story, after decades of consolidation, estimates suggest there are still around 5,000 advice firms with about 27,000 advisors left in the market today. There are multiple reasons why activity has increased, but many believe it to be an inevitable consequence of a a profession dominated by small firms and ageing advisors. There has been some disagreement about the extent to which this level of M&A activity is going to continue, though. At Money Marketing Interactive in Leeds in May this year, Albemarle Street Partners Managing Director Charlie Parker suggested consolidation in the advisor market is likely to dry up off the back of rising interest rates and inflation. The reason for this, he said, is that consolidation is largely being driven by private equity money. The increasing interest rate, which recently rose by 25 BPS from 0.75% to 1%, is making borrowing money more expensive. And this means buying IFA businesses is unlikely to continue to stack up. But his suggestion was met with disagreement by some. For example, Fairstone Group Chief Executive Lee Hartley thought it was a ridiculous suggestion. On LinkedIn, he wrote, I don't think I've heard a bigger load of tosh this year. For appropriately funded and capitalised firms, an interest rate rise wouldn't make the slightest difference to their ability to continue to acquire. A poll we put up off the back of the debate suggests more of our readers believe consolidation will continue at pace. But we'll have to see. Another key theme I've been following is the rise of in the use of advisor tech and, in parallel, the evolution of the, the hybrid advice model. In March, I wrote a behind-the-headlines analysis about the relentless rise of hybrid advice, which has continued to gather pace in 2022. Quilter had recently told me it will pilot its hybrid advice proposition towards the end of this year. Its CEO, Paul Feeney, said the offering will reach out to a much wider group of people who do not currently have access to or cannot afford advice. In April last year, Vanguard launched its financial advice service for UK retirement savers aimed at clients with more than £50,000 invested on its platform. The business has also more recently laid out plans to expand its advice business, called Vanguard Personal Financial Planning, to cater to people in retirement. The firm said it's pleased with the early reception the service has received. And more recently, Canada Life has thrown its hat in the ring, laying out plans to provide guidance for people who might not seek traditional financial advice. I spoke to the business's new CEO, Lindsay Ricks, last month, and she told me she wants the financial services industry to be able to help more people, whether through full regulated advice, robo-advice or guidance. I've written five of the past 12 cover stories for Money Marketing, but my favourite by far was penning the epic love story of mutual life company LV. After splitting up with its general insurance business, LV had a whirlwind romance with private equity firm Bain Capital, but its members stepped in and voted down any sort of deal. Royal London was waiting in the wings to suggest a tie-up, but LV decided to remain a strong independent mutual, for the time being at least. 
it got into an open relationship with Embark to launch a new service allowing advisors to trade the former's smooth managed investment fund range through the latter's platform. For now, LV remains single. How long for is anybody's guess? A personal passion of mine is equality and diversity, so this is something I've been keen to write about at Money Marketing. It's no secret that financial services is not the most diverse sector. The financial advice profession in particular has a long way to go before it can call itself diverse. In a leader I wrote for the January issue of Money Marketing, I wanted to highlight some of the things we we can and are doing to encourage more women and people from diverse backgrounds into the sector. But also I wanted to make it clear that we can't do it alone. It is up to the profession to not only recognise this as an issue, but to think of ways to make it better. For the March issue, to coincide with International Women's Day, I wrote the cover story on this. It focused largely on gender diversity, although this is by no, by no means the only thing that needs to change. One of my favourite parts of being a journalist is meeting new people on an almost daily basis, so I've really enjoyed contributing to our MM Meet series. For the February 2022 issue, I interviewed AJ Bell Chief Executive Andy Bell. We talked about the importance of having deep foundations in a business and the benefits of a senior management team where everyone has been in each other's shoes. He told me that when he launched the company in 1995, he didn't have huge ambitions to grow it. He just felt platforms were something he was good at and could do well. But the the business has made a profit every quarter for the past 27 years. If this doesn't demonstrate the importance of strong foundations, I don't know what does. For the May issue, I spoke to Dynamic Planner CEO Ben Goss about his passion for using technology to create a more engaging financial planning experience for consumers and advisors. He was a really interesting person to interview. He worked on the launch of Egg, which was an internet bank back in the day, and he told me that one of his clients had once said to him that they believed the internet was going to be a flash in the pan. I don't remember much about the mid-90s, I was only just starting school at the time, but I do remember the days of using books in the library for research rather than the internet, and I also remember having computer lessons as a child, which seems laughable now when you see two-year-olds on iPads. So although the notion that the internet could be considered a short-lived fad nowadays sounds ridiculous, maybe at the time it was a common assumption. All in all, I've had a great first year at Money Marketing writing about a huge range of topics, and I look forward to the next year. Thank you, Lois, for that lovely account of your first year. We do hope that you enjoyed it. Please do keep up to date with all our new releases via Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcasts from. You can also keep up to date with all our new content published on the Money Marketing website, as well as our print edition Money Marketing Mag. So make sure to subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. See you next time.